to a lot of people in the session today talked about what big data is, and different people have different ideas about that. In really, data is big. In my view, data is big anytime that the data analysis, the handling or the analysis of the data or predictions of the data or operations you want to do on the data present a significant challenge. So if you're thinking about how you're going to move the data or where you're going to store the data, if those thoughts are crossing your head, it's kind of big data. Um, because, you know, in, in traditional, if you, do, do a, if you go to this way astronomy looked when I was a graduate student, um, there were no data sets that were really big in the sense that every data set, every graduate student, their data sat in, you know, a disk or a tape on their desk. They didn't have to think about what they were going to do about it. And then with the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, which I was involved in, uh, data started to really get big. We had to really think about where's the data going to live, where are our copies going to be, and each institution that had a copy had to think hard about how it was going to lay that copy out. And, and that, I think that's when it became big data in certain ways. I actually don't like the phrase big data so much because, because the challenges of working with data aren't really from its bigness, usually. And, you know, the, having a lot of data, you have to worry, you have to think about it, you have to deal with it. But, um, but really what makes data analysis challenging is that the signals that we care about in astronomy are not, like, just visible in the data. You have to, you have to build models of the things you're seeing, you have to understand the sources of noise, you have to understand the ways in which the devices we use don't faithfully reproduce the intensity field coming into the telescope. We have to think about, the data is always connected to the things we care about in a very uh, indirect way. And so really the challenges, I, I would say, are not from the bigness of the data. It's from the fact that the data is a, it's like a noisy hash of the things that we care about. I mean, one of the things I think that makes working with any kind of data, whether it's astronomy data or, or in any field, uh, one of the things that makes it complicated is the data are always very heterogeneous. You you observe different things about different objects, and, uh, and those different things can be very qualitatively different. You might have a spectrum in the optical of something, you might have imaging in the radio of an object, and then there might be another object where you don't have the radio, but you have an x-ray image. And when you have different data about different, different kinds of data about different things, you have to sort of make a bespoke data analysis for every object. And that's when it starts again become very challenging and you sort of end up thinking about the data as being big again. But it's not really big because it's large, it's big because it's complex and heterogeneous. The different fields of astronomy actually look very different. And it was really noticeable over the last few days how differently people think about, say, measuring the masses in the radii of neutron stars versus how they think about understanding the star formation histories of galaxies, versus how they think about the cosmological parameters, like the age of the universe. So in the case of the cosmological parameters, you know, we know the age of the universe now to 1%, which is pretty remarkable, uh, given the state it was when I, was, uh, when I started in the field. Um, and uh, that presents a really, that's a really unusual situation. We have, we have a very, if you think about what data that, that age estimate is based on, it is uh, noisy data coming from different sources. Um, and the reason we can get a 1% measurement is we have extremely precise predictions of certain aspects of the universe that are very sensitive to the age. So if we can measure those aspects, uh, we can determine the age very accurately, and that's how it works. Um, but in order to measure those aspects, we have to understand the noise in our data really well, and we have to understand what we're observing really well. Um, so, so I think astronomy is kind of in a, an unusual place where we have this sort of heterogeneous, noisy data that we don't get to control, and yet we're expecting, we're asking of the data very precise questions, 1% level questions when it comes to cosmology. I think that's unusual. I think in, in most areas of human endeavor, if you're asking for 1% answers, you're asking a very clean question of very clean data. And we, we don't get the clean data, but we are expecting the good answer. So I think we're unusual in that respect. This is something that is new in astronomy, this kind of paradigm of dealing with this kind of amount of heterogeneous data. Do you think this is something that's specific to now? 
I think the, so yes, in the sense that as I was saying, when I was a, when I was a graduate student, there were no data sets at this sort of magnitude, or at least not ones that I encountered. I guess there were in radio astronomy, but there were not, uh, the, the people certainly were not staggering under the load of their data in the way they are now. So I think a lot has changed in terms of how the data looms in our head as being part of the technical challenge of a project. Um, uh, I think the other thing that's changed over the last few years is exactly this point about the precision of the cosmological parameters. I think the, the uh, you know, when I, when I started working in cosmology, there were, we didn't know the age of the universe to a factor of two, and so we could ask, we could ask these questions about the universe sort of much more roughly. We only needed, you only needed a rough prediction and you only needed pretty good data. Now we expect, because we're expecting 1% answers, uh, our demands are just really high.